Okay, I would like to call this regular board meeting of the Hicksville Exempted Village Board of Education to order. Roll call, please. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Iden? Here. Mrs. Jones? Here. Mrs. Mazur? Here. Mr. Methman? Here. Mrs. Carrier? Here. Pledge of Allegiance, please stand. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So again, officially, I want to thank everybody for coming. We appreciate the public um, attending meetings. We always encourage that. Uh, we're going to start out with the principal reports. Jeff Slattery, you are on top. All right, uh, good evening. Um, just a quick run through of some events that have been going on at Hicksville High School over the last month. Uh, first off, I want to go back to Tuesday, February 23rd. The uh, class of 2022, they were administered the uh, state-required junior ACT test. Uh, Mr. Mike Blue, uh, of course, uh, administers that test to our students, and we appreciate all the flexibility of our teaching staff. And uh, again, this is required in every junior in the district that does take that test, and we do it off campus. Uh, mm -hmm. March 5th, 2021, um, I want to thank all of our teaching and administrative staff for their hardworking, conducted innovative interviews for Mrs. Leone's class. I know uh, typically we have a lot of uh, people from the community come in and uh, administer these interviews uh, this year because of COVID, and at that point, we're not allowing visitors. Uh, we had to kind of be creative, but the kids did a great job. And, and again, I appreciate everything Mrs. Leone puts into that program because I think it's an awesome opportunity for our students. Coordination, that occurred over the weekend of uh, March 6th. And again, COVID-19, uh, we had to make some uh, adjustments to what we typically do. Um, first off, the seniors did a great job and they actually got to have kind of a unique experience also. Based on the uh, regulations and recommendations of COVID, uh, we were not allowed to have a typical coordination where the entire public was allowed to come in. And typically we do this up at the Huber Opera House. Um, of course, the limited seating at the Huber and space, we decided to take advantage of our commons and of course our stage, which is much larger than the stage at the Huber. And uh, I wanna thank Mr. Bassett and his staff for coming in and they set up, uh, we had up to 30%, I believe at that time, or excuse me, 25% of capacity could be in there. Every single senior student was allowed to have four uh, tickets and those were primarily to give to parents. And with that being said, we knew our students and our staff who usually enjoy coordination were not going to be able to attend. So again, unique experience was on Friday afternoon, we kind of did our first show, it was like a prep show, and all of our high school students and staff were able to, to see the coordination. And then of course, Saturday was the, uh, the coordination that was for the public. Um, again, I already thank Derek Bassett. I also want to thank Joy Geiger and Amber Zagrich because I know the amount of time and effort they put into that show. And again, it was a great show. March 9th, we had the APT interviews. Um, of course, these interviews take place uh, during the spring prior to the upcoming school year. And uh, this year, we're actually in competition with Fairview and Antwerp for the programming. And I would like to say that uh, Hicksville students earned six of the eight spots. So not to be overly competitive, but good for Hicksville. You know, I always think we do a great job preparing our students and uh, they always do a nice job there. So we're excited for those students to uh, attend APT next year. I believe four of them are going to be juniors next year. I think two are seniors that are being accepted into the program. Um, today, March 15th, uh, we actually started our women's self-defense course today in our senior seminar class. I know uh, Mr. Dave Blue hosts that event. It's actually an awesome event. It's the second year we've done this. Uh, Mr. Randy Moore on Edgerton uh, provides this opportunity. And uh, we do uh, two 80-minute sessions for each group of girls. And there's two groups of our girls that do this. And uh, it's a great opportunity for our girls to learn some, some things. You know, it's about awareness, mostly awareness, but also uh, some other opportunities of physically how to, to handle themselves when they're on their own and things like that. But the number one thing, again, is awareness. And the girls last year, excuse me, was it last year, Mr. Blue, or two years ago? Two, two years ago, really enjoyed the course. Uh, they said they highly recommended it. Mr. Blue, of course, it's in his classroom. He highly recommends it, so it's something we're going to continue to do. Um, lastly, um, a senior trip update. Uh, we're looking to have a senior trip. Of course, typically, it's the week before spring break, as we all know. And back in January, I spoke to everyone about, hey, let's move this back to May to give us the most opportunity to have things open up because of the whole COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I do have an itinerary that I will share with everyone at a later point, but I just want you to know that our number one goal is we want to be as safe as possible. Uh, number two, those of you that remember the seniors last year, everything they missed out on, we want to make sure that, you know, moving forward, we're doing everything we can to provide what we can for our students. 
So our goal is to leave on Tuesday, May 4th at 10 p.m. and of course go to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. There's going to be uh, multiple opportunities to do outdoor activities, hiking, uh, whitewater rafting, things of that nature. Um, and of course, we will return on Saturday morning at roughly 5 a.m. on the 8th. Um, again, I have a rough draft itinerary that I can share, but again, just an update. And of course, I know parents are asking because it's, kind of, it's been kind of interesting because you know we've talked about our participation and the senior trip being a little bit lower. Um, in fact, I think the best participation we ever had might have been Mr. Crawls, when he was an advisor, we all went to New York City, we had a large turnout, but most of the time it's only like 20, 25% of the kids. And so um, this COVID, I think, has had a positive impact on that. We have a lot of kids and parents saying, hey, where are we going? Are we gonna have this? Because they see the value in being with their classmates and doing something like that as their last hurrah, you know, headed into commencement. Junior senior prom, that is scheduled for Saturday, May 1st. And again, like I said before, based on COVID protocol that we currently have, we're planning on having as normal prom as possible. Now, the line came out on February 25th and said he would be releasing very, very soon the requirements, regulations, recommendations, whatever you want to call them. Well, now it's March 15th, it's been nothing so far. Um, I just asked that everybody be patient. We will have a prom. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like yet, but we're going to have a prom. Okay, so that is our goal. Um, outside of that, spring break will take place uh, from Monday, March 29th through Friday, April 2nd. Uh, the Four County Career Center Senior Awards Program will be May 25th. And as a reminder, because it caught everybody, caught everyone off guard last month, commencement, it is Sunday, May 30th. Okay, that is Memorial Day weekend. That's the first time in long haul since I've been here, it's been on Memorial Day. And I could tell you how far back we'd have to go, but. 1987. Keep that in mind. What's that? 1987. 1987 is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Jeff, what? does commencement look like at this point? Well, um, I'm basing it on events that are allowed to occur indoors. Mm -hmm. And based on that, um, as long as we do social distancing, and again, through the CDC school requirements, it's three feet, not six feet, wear masks, and we're up to 25% capacity indoor. I figured with our double-decker side of our uh, bleachers, which holds roughly, and correct me if I'm wrong, someone in here, I think 1,100, 1,200. Um, and we'll put as many chairs three feet apart as possible on the floor. In fact, if every chair I can get in there, I'm probably going to put in there. That way, if that 25% of, let's say, 1,600 or 1,700, we're looking at 400 tickets, and the goal is to get as many tickets per senior as possible. Mm -hmm. So could you put, you know, the parents sitting together, mm -hmm. you could slide those chairs together, but, you know, I mean, sure. so... Technically, you could do that, yes. I mean, in a way, to groups of four. In a few that's months. kind of what we did at Coronation. You're learning all my tricks. Yeah. <laughs> no, but our goal is to have a normal commencement and of course maximize participation. Okay. I love the um, self-defense class, that's mm -hmm. awesome. How many seniors do we have in APT now? Current seniors? Yeah. I think currently, I think we have five seniors, Mr. Mike Blue. I didn't have five. Or we currently have five seniors in APT. Yes. That's awesome, really. Okay, Mrs. Kaufman, you're up next. On March 11th and 12th, um, we conducted our 2021-22 kindergarten registration. We had 54 students assessed, um, seven additional call-ins, and 17 current readiness students that will be transitioning into kindergarten next year. So right now we have a total of 78 students. Wow. Which is pretty good for this time of the year. That's good. Um, next week, our third and fourth grade students will begin their ELA state test. Um, we're testing our HVA students on Monday, and the rest of the gang will be tested on Tuesday and Thursday. And lastly, a congratulations to third grade student Clarissa Brown for placing in the top five of a national competition. Um, this company that sponsored the competition, they're called Skyworks 3, it was a writing competition, um, was most impressed with her distinct voice and animated tone. And so we, along with her teacher, Mrs. Bussing, uh, are just very, very proud of her for representing Bootsville so well. That's awesome. Yeah. Mr. Altman. Hello. Um, this week we are finishing up our second round of formal evaluations. Uh, it's been neat sitting on the other side and seeing all the neat lessons that our teachers create for our kids. Um, we've also been preparing for our HVA students to take the state test. 
Um, all of our HVA students are scheduled to either take the state test with their peers in their actual classrooms, or if they want to choose to be tested individually by a one-on-one -on -one proctor, uh, we'll do that the week of April 5th. Uh, I'd like to highlight Mrs. Taylor, as she is uh, starting her review competition now for her students for the state test, which she calls March Mathness. <laughs> each, uh, each day, her students compete as teams to see which team can be the champion. And her fun ways to review, along with her amazing teaching skills, continually puts our sixth grade math uh, students right up there with the highest achieving in the area with the state test. Um, our sixth grade team and I are also prepping for the sixth grade shake. Uh, we've been finalizing our judges for each round. I'd just like to give a big uh, shout out to all the community members that volunteered uh, their time to judge a shake for our, for our staff and for our kids. That's pretty much it. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> Mr. Countryman. Uh, oh, I I'm sorry. I skipped one. I don't have a four county report currently. So. I figured that's probably <laughs> I met with Beth Lewis. She's the preschool director for the ESC and to discuss our programming in the new facility. Um, uh, she's excited about uh, the direction we're going with that, and we are too. Three of the rooms will be, or three of the sessions, because we'll have two morning and two afternoons. So okay. three of them will consist of um, uh, typical students and then students that require some extra services and then one of the afternoon or morning session, undetermined at this point, will be just straight typical. So we're mm. pretty sure we're gonna be able to uh, accommodate more than we have, although keep in mind, we did a waiver the last few years in our regular one and had the extra teachers in order to see if we really could fill two classrooms. So we, we can, we're confident we can, and uh, <clears throat> The smaller number will be better in the long run. So that's why we obviously put them in the new building. Um, we, um, I continue to meet weekly with the uh, contractors as always, and everything with the building is running on schedule as planned. The weight room equipment's been ordered. Uh, Eric and John and I drove to uh, Seville, Ohio last week and met with um, a sales representative and looked at um, furniture samples, which makes it easier to kind of pick that stuff out when you can actually see it and try it and see what we think is going to be the best. And, and uh, so we've done that, and I believe that requisition has been submitted as well. Um, for that, it was a three-hour trip one way, but it was worth <laughs> it to be able to uh, see, uh, see it. And that is under the budget that we had originally set as well, barely, but it's under budget. Um, the majority of our employees received the COVID, their first COVID shot on Friday, February 26th, as you all know, and students were not here on that day as it would have been very difficult to obtain enough subs in order to keep the day rolling with that many teachers going in and out and in and out. So that will happen again on Friday, April 9th, when they receive their second shot. There will be no students on that day either. And that is all I have. Okay. We need a motion for minutes and uh, financials. I'll move. I'll okay. second. Stuff and Galen, thank you. Minutes from the regular board meeting on February 22nd, 2021. We also have the treasurer's consent agenda, cash reconciliation as of February 28th, 2021. Financial statements for February of 2021 and approve the amended certificate of estimated resources for fiscal year 2021 as, pre pre <coughs> excuse me, as presented total general fund resources of $14,461,511.93 and total resources for all funds of $25,543,328.13. Approve the amended fiscal 2021 permanent appropriations as presented, total general fund appropriations of $11,857,031.04, and total appropriations for all funds of $21,310,663.27. Accept the following donations, $75 from the Ayers family for the athletic department in memory of Richard Ayers, $80 for the Clean family for the Athletic Department in memory of Richard Ayers. $125 from an anonymous donor for the STEAM in memory of Joe Overmeyer. 
$325.21 from Farmers Emergency Bank for Student of the Quarter, $500 from an anonymous donor for the scholarship in memory of Noah Carrickson, and $500 from the Weatherhead family for scholarship in memory of Francesca Weatherhead. Mike, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I don't. If there's any questions, I'll try to answer them. <laughs> Everything looked good in the reports. Okay, roll call, please. Mrs. Mazur? Yes. Mr. Methman? Yes. Mr. Iden? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Carrier? Yes. Passes 5 0. Need a motion for employment of certified staff? I'll, I'll move. move. I'll second. Okay. Craig and Minda? Recommend to approve an addendum to the psych school psychologist employment contract as attached. Roll call. Mr. Hyden? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Mazur? Yes. Mrs. Methman? Yes. And Mr. M Mrs. Carrier? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Need another motion? I'll move. I'll second. Steph? Galen? Recommend issuing a three-year contract to Mike Altman as middle school <coughs> principal commencing August 1st, 2021 and ending July 31st, 2024. Mike, you've done a great job. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. You've really, you stepped into a position that had big shoes to fill and you have yeah, done an outstanding job. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Roll call. Mrs. Mazur? Yes. Mr. Methman? Yes. Mr. Iden? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Carrier? Yes. Another motion? I'll move. I'll second. Craig and Minda. Recommend issuing a five year contract to Jeff Slattery as high school principal commencing August 1st, 2021, and ending July 31st. 2026. Sure, you want to stay here that long? Five years, man. Good. Jeff, as always, you do an outstanding job. You know, we try to tell the admin staff in general how much we appreciate you, but you really do go above and beyond, and we appreciate you. Roll call. Mr. Iden? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Mazur? Yes. Mr. Methvin? Yes. Mrs. Carrier? Yes. So all those motions pass 5 0. Oh, one more on the back. You need another move. motion. I'll move. Galen? Do I have a second? Minda. Oh, I'll Minda. Second. Sorry, missed that. Recommend to approve Madison Stockman as a certified substitute for the 2021 school year. Roll call. Mr. Methvin? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Iden? Yes. Mrs. Mazur? Yes. And Mrs. Carrier? Yes. The motion passes 5 0. Need a motion for employment of classified staff? I'll move. Steph? Second. Galen, thank you. Recommend to approve the following supplemental contract for the 2021 school year for Tanya Iden, co freshman class advisor. This also means that you're going to be doing a lot of work. I hope you know that because <laughs> that's what happens. Roll call. Mrs. Mazur? Yes. Mr. Methvin? Yes. Mr. Iden? Abstain. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Carrier? Yes. Motion passes four with one abstention. And then a motion for services and agreements. I'll move. I'll second. Craig and Galen. Recommend to approve a service agreement with Northwest Ohio Education Service Center per Ohio Revised Code. This agreement will begin on July 1st, 2021 and shall terminate on July 30th, 2022. Total projected cost is $506,796.06. Recommend to approve a memorandum of understanding by the Hicksville Education Association and the Hicksville Exempted Village Board of Education. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Iden? Yes. Mr. Methvin? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Mazur? Yes. 
Is this carrier? Yes, motion passes 5-0. And a motion for other business? I'll move. I'll second. Minda and Steph, thank you. Recommend to approve the following new and revised Board of Education bylaws and policies. I'm gonna skip the numbers. Technical corrections, non-discrimination and equal opportunity, equal, oppor equal employment opportunity. Section 405, four, I'm sorry, 404, 404, oh my goodness, 504 and 504A, prohibition against disability discrimination in, in employment, anti-harassment, controversial issues, non-discrimination and access to equal educational opportunity, Section 504 ADA, prohibition against discrimination based on disability, non-discrimination on the basis of sex and education programs or activities, non-discrimination and equal employment opportunity, Section 504 ADA, prohibition against disability discrimination in employment, anti-harassment, non-discrimination and equal, equal employment opportunity, Section 504 ADA, prohibition against disability discrimination in employment, anti-harassment, anti-harassment, cost principles, spending federal funds, investments and in budget preparation, procurement of federal grants and funds, deposit of public funds, cash collection points, video surveillance and electronic monitoring, property inventory, accounting system for capital assets, protective facial coverings during pandemic epidemic events, food services and wellness. Lovely reading. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say I was um, happy with the change that we made with adding the male and female to the one panel yeah. that mm -hmm. was that was good I like that otherwise it was just a lot of yeah. small changes little stuff yeah yeah periods yeah <laughs> okay roll call please Mrs. Jones yes Mrs. Mazur yes Mr. Iden yes Mr. Methvin yes Mrs. Carrier yes motion passes 5-0 do we have any old business uh, I just want to bring up the growing God's way um, I don't even know what to call it um, but the, that plan um, just where are we at with Remember that Australia. well yeah because he had sent me an email last month I think I spoke with him today about that and uh, we'll have something on the board agenda on April simply stating that we're okay with participating in the after-school program that we spoke about here at the school uh, and that you are all okay with it because they want board approval so. i've seen it in the paper a lot recently yeah. different schools mm -hmm. yeah. and so just to clarify this is an after-school program that's right okay any other discussion jim do we have any uh athletic Booster meeting coming up anytime? Um, I know we've kind of for a while. I mean, technically, I'm not charged yet, like Booster, because I'm an administrator at the school. So that's kind of why I try to let other people kind of manipulate and maintain that and work gotcha. out. But uh, it seems to be happening where if I don't call a meeting, there are no meetings. So uh, I'm with, I, I apologize, but that's, <laughs> we'll try to get something aligned, lined up. Because I know we're going to do a golf outing again, and that's kind of my baby last year. So, uh, I'll get some information out, so hopefully we can be maybe in April okay. and get that plan for August 1st or whatever it is, that first Saturday in August is, and go from there. But I do know there's been kind of a transition to, you know, we can't say enough about Jack Shock and what he's done, you know, for our, our athletic boosters forever. I mean, it's, he's just been the man, but uh, it's come to a point where he, he needs help, maybe some transitioning. Mm -hmm. And like we said before, COVID hit when we were starting to get it going. And now that we're coming out of that, I think it's going to be a better opportunity to start growing that again in the right direction, making it a healthier athletic boosters for all our student athletes. Sounds good. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. We have come to the point of our meeting that we do allow unannounced guests who'd like to address the board. Um, so if you'd like to move up to the corner here and make sure and sign in, um, just one at a time, we just ask that you do state your name. Um, Mike is 
taking notes up here and um, per our um, procedures and rules you are limited to four minutes um, we don't really want to be here till 10 o'clock no offense <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and stand here and take this off I think I'm good six feet away from it my jet getting spittle get, get a test I'm used to it it's all right <laughs> I want to thank the board for allowing me to speak. At the beginning of this school year, our opening day breakfast, which some of you board members were present, as well as many of our community members, we all came together to celebrate a new school year, to show pride for our district, to talk about the good things we have done and will do, continuing for our students, to show that we all want to work together, sort of like a team. To me, the most important aspects of a team are communication and building relationships those things that build trust and commitment. It must be important to you as well as Mr. Countryman has made this his mantra for the year, building relationships. His opening day staff and then, <clears throat> excuse me, meeting was centered on building relationships within our district and especially with our kids. He has mentioned it many times this school year in person and with the communications to the staff, just like a number of these printouts uh, from emails that he's given. I want to tell you all this. I love it. In my opinion, this is he is absolutely spot on on this topic. This is the way to motivate staff and our students too. Doing this builds trust and all the willingness to go that extra yard. A common goal that supports and benefits the whole, not just the one. Unfortunately, I know something in which started so promising has now stopped. Communication has broken down and relationships are being severed. Protocols are not being followed. But most importantly, trust is being lost. Recently, I've been part of a situation in which one of our staff members has, without any warning, been asked to give up something they are darn good at and they love it. Why? No documentation nor reasons were given at that meeting. The administration in that room said, we're blindsided by this. They didn't understand why this was happening. Then there was a follow-up meeting in which administration said to me, yes, that staff member will keep their position. Great. I felt that's the way it should be. One month later, that staff member was called back in and the decision was reversed. No. Nothing provided again at that meeting except hearsay and frankly, things that were said were disputed they were inaccurate, and they were untrue. And that's where we're at now. We're in a negative situation that has ramifications that will go past this day. We all broke something, and I hope the board will find time to fix it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, First of all, I'd like to echo Mr. Uh, Slattery's comments about the uh, self-defense. That's a pretty good gig. It's a real good gig. And uh, well worth it. So we appreciate the funding of that process. Um, now, I'd like to reemphasize and echo what Mr. Blue said. I, I will not be nearly as eloquent as he is, but uh, the situation uh, is incredibly disappointing to me. You know, you know as a professional level, as a 30-plus member person here in the athletic department on staff. I've been in multiple roles in the athletic department and I've never seen anything uh, this, like this that's going on. Uh, I guess I'd ask you guys to refer to my letter that I wrote to you pertaining to this. Uh, you know, I got some real concerns about that. The whole process, it, it, it is very, very disappointing. Uh, I'd be more than happy to discuss any of this with anybody at any time. And I just want to kind of say that much, but again, I don't know if anybody can say it much better than Mike Blue. It's, uh, I, it's a, he said the word ramifications. Man, and, and as a head coach here, as a coach here, man, and there's some trust, there's, there's, there's a trust issue that is now developed. And I believe you might want to address some other head coaches about the trust issue that is now developed. Um, and that's very, very concerning because I think, I, I, we got a great gig. We got a great gig in this building. No, no, I, I go, how far are we going to go before we find another school, especially one our size, that has every head coach on staff? That's unbelievable. And uh, that's pretty important. Thank you.
Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to address the board? Um, I am going to say two things. Um, one, regarding the athletic program, it has come to our attention that there are not good processes and procedures in place. And our athletic directors and our admin are working to rectify that. And second, personnel matters will not be discussed in public. Um, I would think any employed person would not want their reasons for hiring, firing, promotion, demotion, any of that made public. I mean, that is a right of um, an individual to have those things to be held in confidence. Um, so we will not be addressing um, employment issues in public. And that is part of the reason why we go into an executive session is so we can discuss those matters because it is not a public matter. And I would think all employed people would appreciate that. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there that that discussion will not be held in, in public. Um, we do appreciate um, all the input. We do appreciate people coming from the public and addressing their concerns to the board. You don't always have an opportunity to do that, so this is the place for that to happen. Um, so we appreciate you coming and showing support and um, addressing your concerns with us. Any other comments or discussion? Okay. So we will be going into executive session um, at 6.02 now. We'll go in at 6.10. We will not be making any um, decisions afterwards. And then we will be meeting again for our next meeting on Monday, April 19th at 5.30. So I do need a motion to go into executive session. I'll move. I'll second. <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> <It's> unanimous. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call Minda and who said second? Galen. Galen. Second. Minda and Galen. So again, at 6.10. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I'll do roll call. Oh, sorry, roll call. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Methvin? Yes. Mr. Iden? Yes. Mrs. Mazur? Yes. And Mrs. Carrier? Yes. <coughs> Motion approves 5 0.